here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Next time you stop at a soda fountain, look for the Horlick name at the malted milk dispenser. If it's a quality store you're in, you're almost certain to see it. Quality stores usually serve Horlick's malted milk as a regular feature. They know that for richness, for flavor, for results, this famous original malted milk is not to be compared with the many imitations of Horlick's now on the market. They are paying more to give you the best. The Horlick name at a soda fountain, then, is a sign of that store owner's high standard of selection. If you don't see it, ask the clerk to get Horlicks for you. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, when a gentleman called on Lum and Abner and explained that he was connected with the law firm that is defending the old fellows in the lawsuit brought against them by Squire Skimp, Lum very willingly answered a list of questions regarding the case and signed his name to the statement. After he left, however, it was learned that the stranger is employed by Squire Skimp, and the information he secured will make damaging evidence when the case is brought to trial. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum over at their picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium, evidently auditing the books. Listen. Six and two is ten, or eight, or, yeah. All calls and pours. All ten. Four is, uh, oh, four, four. Three and seven is, uh, ten. Put down the one and carry the old, er, uh, no. Dad, blame it. Six and two is eight, and all ten. Well, well, I've been looking all over for you. Well, come in, Dick. <laughs> I uh, was just figuring up our losses and profits on our picture show here. Yeah, how's it coming out? Well, I don't know yet. I sort of mixed up on my figures here. We've either made $300 or lost $300. I don't know which. Oh, well, you're bound to be making money, Mom. Amount of business you've been doing. Yeah, I think so. I'm down Let it go. <laughs> well, I figure on the thing. The uh, worst mixed up I get. <laughs> when did you get back from the county seat? Oh, about an hour ago, I reckon. Any new developments in the lawsuit? No, except things is looking awful unencouraging. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about it now, Lon. You can't tell about what a jury will decide. I don't know, Dick. I'm getting short of jubilance myself now. Even our lawyer says he don't think we stand a chance in the world. He says it looks like Squire's got an ironclad case again. Well, I'll declare. Why, you talked the other day like you wouldn't have any trouble at all. Yeah, but all this new evidence Squire's got, he, he says he's going to ruin it. You mean Abner breaking into Squire's house the other night to get that note back that you wrote him? Yeah, he says that's going to be awful hard to get around, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame that had to happen. Abner had no business doing that. Well, I wouldn't be too hard on him about it, Dick. It, it was an honest mistake. He just never stopped to think. All of us make mistakes once in a while. You know? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I make them myself sometimes. But I don't think we ought to blame a fellow too much when he does something that way. Well, that's funny. I thought you were pretty mad at Abner about that. Well, I was till I got to studying it over I think when one of us makes a mistake that way, we ought to just forget about it. Not even mention it. Oh, sure. I'm glad to see you feel that way about it. I might make some mistake sometime myself. And how would I feel if he got mad at me and kept bringing it up all the time? Sure. Like I told him yesterday evening, when a body makes a mistake, it's done made, so best thing to do is just well, forget I about it. Well, I know you was back yeah. long. When did you get in? Uh, I got back about an hour ago. Well, how did it? How are you, Abner? Oh, all right, I reckon. Uh, what did the lawyer have to say, Lon, Mr. DeLon? Why, he weren't very encouraging, Abner. Said uh, he feared we ain't got a chance of winning the case, and he advised us to settle it out of court if we can. Settle it out of court? Yeah, all this new evidence Squire's got, he says, going to ruin it. Well, I just feared you fix things yesterday afternoon, telling Squire's lawyer everything he knows. What was you doing talking to Squire's lawyer, Lon? Why, he come in here and fooled old Lon. <laughs> Now, Abner, we said we was going to forget about it. Our doggy squire's lawyer come out here yesterday afternoon, Dick. <laughs> Told Lum that he was Mr. DeLong's assistant. <laughs> said he was working for us. and Asked Lum about the questions about squire's accident and got Lum to sign it. <laughs> well, Juan, Abner, you tell everything you know. Uh, well, what is it you had you sign, Lum? Well, may as well tell you about it. A fellow come in the store over there yesterday afternoon and said his name was Ferguson. He was assistant to our lawyer, Mr. DeLonge, and wanted me to answer some questions. Yeah. 
And then I found out later uh, he was one of them Mr. Clarks of the Clark, Clark, and Clark outfit that's handling the keys for Squire. Yeah, I knowed who he was all the time, and Lum wouldn't let me talk, so I couldn't tell him. He was the one that you pointed out to me the other day, Dick, when him and Squire walked past your store down there. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, uh, what did he get you to sign, Lum? Well, I don't know. He asked me about your questions about the keys, and he put out my answers on a piece of paper, and then I signed it. What kind of question? I don't know if I can recollect all of them all planned or not. Something about if we had the right kind of lights in our show here, do I think Squire would have fell down. And, and Lom told him no. <laughs> yeah. You mean a statement admitting that you didn't have the proper lighting in your picture show here? Yeah, I reckon I must have. And he asked Lom if it had been him falling down in somebody else's theater, would, would he expect them to pay him for it if he got hurt? And <laughs> Lom said sure he would. Well, what in the world did you ever tell him any such thing as that for, Lon? Well, I thought he was our lawyer all the time, and I was just giving him my honest opinions on it. Well, if you feel that way about it, why don't you just go ahead and settle with Squire and give him what he's asking for? Well, that's different. The Squire never hurt himself in the first place, and in the second place, he fell down on a purpose, just so he could sue us for a batch of money. Well, why did you tell that lawyer that you thought it was your fault? Tell you the truth, Dick, that fellow sort of asked them questions where I had to answer them that way. I don't know what was the matter with me. Well, uh, did you tell your lawyer all about this this morning? Yeah, that's what I went in to see him for. <laughs> well, no wonder he advised you to settle a case out of court then, long. Well, of course, it ain't my fault now. That fellow taking advantage of me, telling me he was one fellow when he was somebody else. That's just downright cheating. Can they use evidence like that in court when they get it that way? Well, yeah, I suppose so. I couldn't have him arrested for obtaining evidence under false pretenses like you can money, could I? No, no. If you signed your name to those questions and answers, Lum, well, you'll probably hear it read in court tomorrow. Granny well, used to be when they had a trial in court this way. They just submit all the evidence to the jury and let them decide which one was in the wrong in a case like this. Nowadays, there's more underhanded outside work getting a case before it comes to trial than he is in a courtroom. Looks like facts don't mean nothing no more. Well, that's not always true, Long. As a whole, the legal profession is ethical, all right. A man can get justice in our court. Occasionally, you run across some lawyer like this bunch is handling a case for Squire that's unethical, but not often. I wish this case was over with. Swan, I was worried myself sick over it. Well, you should have had some liability insurance here on your show and avoided all this trouble and worry. Had some weight. Some liability insurance. Dealing with the public like this, you and Abner, you've got to have yourself protected. Yeah, I know it. Hi, Grannies. I'm going into the county seat early in the morning for the trial and find some insurance salesman and uh, every kind of insurance is on this place they've got. From here out, I'm going to let the insurance company do the worrying when something happens. Why, sure. I'll get liabilities and property damages and fire and theft and floods and cyclones and tornadoes and... Anything else they can sue us over. Well, there ain't no use to buy no cyclone insurance, Lon. Nobody can start one of them. No, can't nobody stop one of them either. I was just thinking, Lum, if your lawyer says himself that there isn't a chance for you to win this suit and he advised you to settle a case with Squire out of court, well, I believe I'd do that and save all that court expense. Well, you were telling us the other day to go ahead and try the case. Let it come to trial. Squire's won our third interest in a picture show if we settle it out of court and... You said it'd be cheaper on us to take it to court and lose and have to pay him the thousand dollars because a third interest in the show is worth more than that. Yeah, but where are we going to get the thousand dollars cash if we lose? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of, Lum. If he gets a judgment against you and you haven't got the thousand dollars, while he can tie up everything you've got. Tie it up. Yeah, uh, what do you mean tie it up? Well, run an attachment on your show here. He can attach your box office here and get every nickel you take in until he gets his thousand dollars. Oh my goodness. Why, if he done that, we'd just have to close the show up. We couldn't have enough money to buy films with. Yeah, that's what I say. He can close you right up. I never thought about that. Well, why don't we just give him a third entrance, Lum? I'd rather do that than to have the whole show closed. Well, I just hate to let Squire Skimp get the best of it. That'd be just the same as giving him a third entrance in our show. He ain't no more got it coming to him than anybody else here in town. And there's hundreds of them I'd rather give something to if we're just going to make somebody a present or something. Yeah, it looks like a shame, all right, Lum. You weren't no more hurt than you was. Just laid down there in the aisle and made out like he's hurt, I know. Well, I hate to see you do it, too, Lum, but by George, it looks like the only way out. 
Yeah, let's saddle with him and get it over with so we can quit worrying about it. Well, I reckon I may as well call him up then and tell him to call off the trial if you're willing to meet his time. And tell him I said he can just go jump in the lake. That's who he is. I'd rather take a whipping than I do this. Just as we're doing so well with the picture show, too. Yeah, I know one reason he'll try to run things. Couldn't nobody get along with him that way. Hello? Squire? I hate him to keep it. Uh, this is Mom Eddard talking. Yeah, I've got some good news for you. Yeah, that ain't good news. I just called you up to tell you that there ain't no use to have the trial tomorrow. No, me and Abner talked it over and decided we'll settle with you out of court and go ahead and give you a third interest in our picture show. Well, at least I'd want nothing else to do. Huh? Well, you said you would the other day. You said... Well, we ain't got no thousand dollars, though. We can't. That's the reason we're offering to settle out of court. We know we couldn't raise the money if you win the case. Yeah, you can run a attachment, I reckon, but that ain't... Well, all right, if you're just bound and determined to take it court, we'll go to court with it. We'll see you in at the county seat at 10 o'clock tomorrow, then. All right. What's the matter, Lom? Says he's decided he don't want to settle it out of court now. He'd rather have $1,000. Now what are we going to do? Unless Lum and Abner can dig up some new evidence before that case comes to trial tomorrow... It looks like the old fellows are in for some real trouble. Here's a way to reduce and at the same time build up your health. I'm referring to the Horlick Weight Control Plan, as recommended by many experts. What do you do? Simple. Just drink a good glass full of Horlick's malted milk at noon. That's all. You don't need anything else at all for lunch. Then, if you wish, you may take another glass full or a few tablets at the fatigue period in mid-afternoon. Horlicks is a well-balanced food and contains elements that nourish and sustain you. To show how effective this plan is, we recently had 25 women tested. The women lost on an average over three and a half pounds in only three weeks. So you can see that it's well worth trying. One other thing, Horlicks won't let you down as radical weight-reducing plans do. It's strengthening and bodybuilding. That's what I meant when I said you can both reduce and at the same time, build your health the Horlick way. Always keep a package of Horlicks on hand. You can get it, you know, from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickett, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>